Welcome to an introduction to educational research. We are still looking at videos on single case research designs and the video that we will look at today is dealing with the multi-element or multi-treatment design. Well here's the big picture and again <clears throat> if you've been following these videos you've seen this graphic many times. This is the types of educational research and the two major paradigms, the quantitative and the qualitative. And we're working over here on the quantitative side, and we have experimental and non-experimental, and we're on the experimental. And we have videos posted on true experimental, quasi, and pre-experimental. And then we have a series of single case designs, and the videos are posted on the ABA design, multiple baseline, multiple probe, changing criterion, and here we are now at the multi-element design. So let's take a look at an example of a multi-element design or multiple treatment. The multiple treatment or multi-treatment design is an extension and a variation. It can be considered an extension and a variation of the ABAB design. And it is very useful when the purpose is to evaluate the effects of two or more interventions, two or more independent variables on a behavior. Also, one intervention can be compared with another to determine the effect of a treatment package. So you might combine, you can take interventions and combine them together and you get a, what's called a treatment package. And this allows you to compare treatment packages also. Well, let's take a look at this example. This is a possible example of a research study here. On our um, dependent variable is our work completed. So we're looking at a student and their work completed. This would be very low work completed and this would be high work. And we can see from the baseline that the behavior, very low work completed and it's stable in level and trend. And then we have an intervention here. SP stands for social praise. TR stands for token reinforcement. And when we back to social praise, token reinforcement again. And then we have a package here. We have token reinforcement plus, pos sort of plus response cost. So we have token reinforcement plus response cost. And then back to token reinforcement and then back to token reinforcement plus response cost. So here's how the design works. Baseline data was taken and then we took data on just social praise. And so it's moved up in, in a therapeutic direction a little bit. Looks like it's at about 30%. Started out very low. And then we introduced token reinforcement and it even moved higher. It even moved higher in a therapeutic direction, it looks like maybe a little more than 50%. Then we went back to social praise and it went back down again to about the level that it was, which was better than baseline. Then we in, went back to token reinforcement and that went moved in a therapeutic direction. And again, it stabilized about where the first token reinforcement was. Then we introduced token reinforcement plus response cost token reinforcement plus response cause, and then it moved in a therapeutic direction up to, it looks like about 85% homework comple uh, work completion. Then to compare, we went back to token reinforcement. It went back down to about the level that it was at. Then we went to token reinforcement plus response cause. So we were able to compare these three different independent variables. First one was social praise, second one was token reinforcement, and the third one was a package, a combination between token reinforcement and response cause. By the way, response cause, for those of you who may not be familiar with the term, uh, is some form of uh, punishment, not physical necessarily. It could be like a timeout or taking away some privilege or something like that. That's response cause. So here we compared three different interventions, social praise, token reinforcement, and then a package int intervention, token reinforcement plus response cause. And I guess you can say probably by, from the results of this that it looks like the package, token reinforcement plus response cause, seemed to be the most effective. It seemed to be the most effective. However, 
you obviously will run into a, a threat to internal validity because of prior treatments that have been used. So you may have a multi-treatment effect. But this looks pretty good like this package combination between token reinforcement and response cause was the most effective. Problem, not the problem is, so the package of token reinforcement and response cause seems to be the most effective, but we can't say within that package which one was more important. Was it token reinforcement or was it response cause? We can only say that the combination of them seemed to be the most effective. Well, let's take a look at a, another one. Pardon me, I had to pause the video for a minute. We just got a UPS shipment delivery. Okay, so here, the behavior that we're looking at is the pre pre percent of time spent in seat. So we're looking at in seat behavior. And so this is low in seat behavior up to 70%. And here, we are going to be looking at three different independent variables, three different interventions, as compared to baseline. Now, A, the A condition is baseline. We have a B condition, whatever that intervention, it could be any, whatever intervention, and a C condition, which is another intervention, and a D condition, and another D condition. So this example involves comparing three interventions, B, C, and D, with a baseline A. So let's take a look at what it may look like. Okay, so we've taken our baseline, and we have very low in-seat behavior, and it's stabilized in level and trend. And now we'll compare it to a B condition. Now this is an intervention, could be positive reinforcement, could be differential reinforcement, whatever, but it's some kind of an intervention and the data has moved in a therapeutic direction somewhat. So we want from about maybe 7 or 8 percent of the time to around, uh, this would average out at about 20. Now we go and compare it back to baseline, and the baseline has risen a little bit, but still intervention B seems to be more successful than baseline. Now we're going to introduce another independent variable, C, another intervention. And it starts out fairly good, but then it's moving in a contra-therapeutic direction. And so we're going to compare C to baseline, and, and it sort of dropped down. Baseline is still about the same. And now we're going with a third intervention. So three different interventions. This is the third one. And this is D, and this moved in a therapeutic direction, and we'll compare D to baseline. And baseline went back down again to about its initial level, and then we'll compare it to D again. And it still remains somewhat high. So although it appears that D was the most effective of the three interventions, it was more effective than B, and it was more effective than C. It looks that way. In increasing the in-seat behavior, the effects may have been due to a sequence effect. Example, D was more effective because it followed B and C. So we can say, well, it looks like D <coughs> is the most effective of these three different interventions of B, C, and D. D looks like the most effective. However, we have to be careful of sequencing because D may not have been this effective if it were not preceded by B or C. So that's just, you would have to acknowledge that as a possible threat for the results. And the other thing about this design is the intervention can only be compared to the preceding baseline condition and not to each other. So I cannot compare D, intervention D, to C because they're not adjacent. I can only compare D to the baseline which is next to it. And the same here, I can only compare it to the baseline, which is next to it. But again, this is pretty good evidence that D is the most effective of the three interventions of B, C, and D.
the independent variable D was the most effective strategy. Let's take a look at another design. Now, in this example, we're going to implement three interventions. The interventions are B, and then a package intervention of BC. Then we're going to go back to B and BC again, and then we're going to combine B, C, and D. So here we have three interventions or three strategies grouped together in a package. So we'll take baseline data, and again, we're a percent of time in seat, so the student very low in seat behavior. It's stable and level and trend. So now we intervene with the independent variable B. And it moves slightly in a therapeutic direction, slightly. Now we have a combination of interventions. We have two independent variables, B and C, so we'll try that. And it moves in a therapeutic direction, so it's up about, looks like 35, 37%. And now we're going to go compare it back to this B condition. And it goes down. It goes down. So it seems like BC was a little more effective than just B alone. But we'll go back to BC to check out that assumption. And again, it has gotten moved up a little bit more. So now it looks like about 40, 42%. And now we're going to compare it to B, C, and D. So we have three independent variables in one package. And this moves in a therapeutic direction, so we're up about 65% in seat. And now, to double check, we're going to go back to the B condition, the BC condition, I'm sorry. And it moves down to about where it was in BC. So of the interventions B and BC and BCD, it looks like the package BCD had the strongest effect on the dependent variable, which was in seat, behavior, in seat behavior. However, sequencing still can be a problem because BCD may be this high as a result of BC and B coming before it. But this looks like pretty good evidence that the intervention B, the package intervention B, C, D was the most effective. So that would be three, yeah, three independent variables together working on increasing in-seat behavior, and it seems that that one <coughs> was the most effective. So that is the multi-element or treatment design. Some of the advantages, the major advantage, uh, is the economy of time since a number of interventions can be tested in sequence. So we can take a bunch of interventions and test them in sequence and that will save us some time. And it also allow, allows for the comparison between two different interventions when they are implemented in adjacent conditions. So it, we can compare any interventions with the adjacent condition. We can't compare across conditions, only conditions that are right next to it. Limitations, uh, it can present some internal threats to uh, validity. There can be multi-treatment interference because we're having several different independent variables. Sometimes the amount of time required fosters threats because of historical or maturational factors, but that can be so in any piece of research. It may result, the results may come from a carryover or sequencing effect, as you saw, what would be the effect of having prior treatments on the treatment that seems most effective. And when you, it has, you can have an intervention package, which is a combination of several independent variables put together, but you will not be able to identify which independent variable in the package had the most influence. So you can say, yes, uh, when we combine positive reinforcement and response cost, that had the most influence. It increased our behavior in a therapeutic direction, but we can't say which one of those may have been more important. 
There are variations on this design also called the alternating treatments design and the simultaneous treatments design. They are covered beautifully in the Tawny and Gast book, which is a classic in a single case designs. And there's a chapter on multi-treatment that covers alternating treatments, multi-treatment and sim simultaneous treatment designs. Well, okay, so now let's apply your skills. If you go to this URL, and if you're in the course, it's on your syllabus, this will take you to the Journal of Applied Behavior Analysis. And here are three articles that are in the Journal of Applied Behavior Analysis that deal with a multi-treatment or multi-element design. So click on that URL and print out one of those articles. Or you can select an article of your own that does, uses a multi-treatment design and read it and analyze it like we have been and create a Word document um, and title it your name underscore multi-treatment. Uh, write up your analysis of the article you read and then email it to happyj1939 at yahoo.com. Okay, well, time to apply your skills. And here are the resources that were used. And again, please, any critiques, uh, mistakes, typos, please email and let us know so we can correct it. Thank you very much, and we will see you next time.